This is the Civic Arena in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, as the Chicago Bruisers battle the unbeaten and league-leading Pittsburgh Gladiators. Hi, everybody. This is Bob Rathbun, along with Lee Corso as we get set for this week's arena football game. And after two weeks of play, Lee, there's one unbeaten team, and that's Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh looks like they might have the best all-around athletes in this league. Also, they've been very fortunate. They haven't had a lot of injuries that hurt them this so far. But the injury bug has bitten. Quarterback Mike Hohensey went down last week, but Brendan Fulmar came off the bench and did a whale of a job. Fulmar came off the bench, and he had 18 for 24 for three touchdown passes. And also impressive is the fact he did not throw a single interception and that really speaks well of him. Chicago is 0-2 and the bruises are just that. They're bruised and banged up. They've got five new players for this game. Now they brought in some new defensive backs. Number 20 McDay, number 21 Rockmore and number 26 Hart. All can play in the secondary. All have played pro football. They might help them stop that long touchdown pass. Chicago head coach Roy Yock is one of the most innovative coaches in football and he's got a few things up his sleeve for this game. Oh, Last week he put a play in with a the ball was snapped to his holder, hold. He sent Mickelmeyer in motion, his kicker. He drop kicked it into the net. His team went down, caught it for a touchdown. Everybody said, what a coach. So coming up, it's Chicago and Pittsburgh from the Civic Arena in Pittsburgh. ESPN's coverage of arena football is brought to you by Hardy. We're out to win you over. By USA West, a sports break with less sodium and more potassium. It's hard-working refreshment. By United Airlines, you're not just flying, you're flying the friendly skies. And by Budweiser, beat wood age for that clean, crisp taste. This buzz for you. Coming up, the opening kickoff in Arena Football, Chicago beats Pittsburgh next. Where do car buyers from Oakland, Squirrel Hill, Forest Hills, and Penn Hills go for their Subarus? to the Yankee Subaru in Monroeville. For people in McKeesport, North Huntington, Jeanette and Greensburg, once again, it's the Yankee Subaru in Monroeville, where you can select from over 100 new Subarus. For new and used car savings and award-winning service, it's only a short drive to the Yankee Subaru, Route 286, Monroeville. What sharpens knives, saws, and skis? What removes paint and varnish more quickly and easily than ever before possible? It's the revolutionary new Finish Off Ceramic Paint Scraper and Sharpener. Finish Off's patented eight-sided ceramic blade prepares surfaces for refinishing in just one simple step. Throw away the sandpaper, chemicals, goggles, and masks. Do in just hours what used to take days. To order your amazing Finish Off, send $9.95 plus $2.50 for postage and handling to Smithmark Company, Box 526 Latrobe, PA. Visa and MasterCard. Call toll-free 1-800-453-1214. In this reconstituted, freeze-dried, pre-mixed world of ours, it's hard to find a breakfast that's totally made from scratch. Syrup on that? Well, at Hardee's, our biscuits are made just that way, with no shortcuts like some other guys use. But then that's probably why they taste so good. And why at Hardee's, we can truly say, we're out to win you over. <sighs> Working hard can really take it out. So I look for something to put it back. USA Wet is a sports drink that tastes great. No aftertaste, and it gets me moving because it has half the sodium and more potassium than Gatorade. USA Wet, the hard-working sports drink with half the sodium. Now in three delicious flavors. It's hard-working refreshment. Ray Yock, several years ago, came close to being named the Bears head coach by then general manager Jim Finks. He's the head coach of Chicago. And Pittsburgh native Joe Herring leads the Gladiators into battle. And Pittsburgh will be kicking off to Chicago. The kickoff man is number 22, Lee Larson. And keep in mind that on the kicks, any kick that off is off the nets is a live ball and may be recovered and advanced by either team. The deep man, as Larson prepares to kick things off here in Pittsburgh, for Chicago, back deep, is number 40, Terry Hinn. He's in his own end zone. And we're ready. Pittsburgh is 2-0, Chicago 0-2. And, and we're ready for the start of the game at the Civic Arena here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Larson kicked collegiately at the University of Hawaii. And his end over ender. Hinn makes the catch, but he's beyond the back line. That's a touchback. And Chicago will have it first and 10 from their own five-yard line. First and 10. Here are the Chicago two-way starters in this game. 
the fullback Eddie Phillips and the receiver is Finch and Rogers Lewis in at a tight end he is eligible Johnson and McCurry the other down lineman the quarterback of the Chicago Bruisers former South Carolina Gamecock Mike Hole and a quick pass to the near side and it is complete and Chicago picks up four yards as Finch makes the grab the Pittsburgh Gladiators defensively will line up this way and their two-way starters up front, Adams, Dimitrenko, and Walls. In the secondary, Harrison, McLennan, and Stoops. Craig Federico is the linebacker. Chicago has its second down and five yards to go. And Hold is throwing the pass deflected and incomplete. The defensive specialist for the Pittsburgh Gladiators is Rock Richmond, who played at the University of Oregon. He is the defensive specialist that substitutes for the quarterback. Third down and five yards to go for Chicago. Mike Hole, the quarterback. He is fourth in the arena football in passing, but just 41%. In trouble. And it's going to set up fourth down and long. Leave the Chicago club has had a lot of difficulty converting third down. Oh, yeah, they, they set an all-time record for being so bad. 13%. They've only hit three for 22. Now it's three for 23. They've got to do better than that, or they'll never get the ball and keep the ball against this good football team in Pittsburgh. Nick Mickemeyer has come into the game, number 92, to try a field goal. This attempt will come from his own two-yard line. So this will be a 56-yard attempt. Meyers' kick will fall short, and Ricky Mitchell returns out of his own end zone. 10, 15. And Chicago will have it first down at 10 on a great return by Ricky Mitchell, who played at Northern Illinois, and a young man you know very well. Played for me at Northern Illinois. One of the most impressive things about Mitchell, he's such a great competitor. The quarterback of the Pittsburgh Gladiators making his first start is Brendan Fulmer, who played at California University in Pennsylvania. He's 23 years old, and the last time he started the game, he was quarterback in California against Edinburgh in the season finale last year. He moves in to start today for the injured Mike Hohensey for the Gladiators. First and 10, Pittsburgh to the 20. And that will be an incomplete pass. The referee indicating that uh, Fulmer's arm was going forward, and that's an incomplete pass. Second down. And ten. Second and ten. Now, what's happening 20. right now, the quarterbacks have not rubbed the ball down. This ball is slippery. Hull did the same thing right now that number seven Fulmer does. The ball is too slippery. They've got to rub it down on the AstroTurf and get some of that shine off of it. Second down at ten, Pittsburgh from their own 20-yard line. The man in motion is McClellan. Incomplete. Or is it? Oh, they say first down. Boy, it looked like he juggled that ball, taking it out of bounds, Russell Hairston. But the leading receiver in arena football is credited with the catch. Ray Yock on the Chicago sideline is irate at that call. Now remember, the rule is, is you, can only have, you only have to keep one foot in. Now remember, though, he must have possession of the ball. Now you watch Russell Harrison drive him deep, number 23, Harrison. Now we can't see exactly where his feet are, but right now he's juggling the ball. That was a lousy call. Not a bad call, a lousy call. Pittsburgh is the benefactor. They have it first and 10 from the Chicago 18. Penalty flag squad. And an incomplete pass intended for Craig Federico. There is no score. We've played three minutes in the first quarter on our first flag of the day. And the referee, Jack Baker, talking to the Chicago defensive captain, Brent Johnson. He'll call illegal procedure. Two men were moving at the same time, and they're not playing in Canada. You can do that in Canada, but not in Pittsburgh. There's a lot of things you can do in Canada you can't do in <laughs> Pittsburgh. I got illegal motion on the offense. Penalty is declined. Second down. 
the bruisers take the play Second down. and now brendan fulmar as one for three in the game we'll check my telestrator would you please 10 55 to play and the throw gets the football down to the 13. Russell Hairston makes the catch, and Hairston's been quite a story here in the first two weeks of arena football. You see what he did last week. He leads the league in receiving and in scoring. He has already caught seven touchdown passes in two weeks. Those numbers against Chicago last Friday at the Rosemont Horizon. Pittsburgh with it, third and five. McClellan in motion. Incomplete and nearly into the hands of lineman Willis Yates. Uh, Scott Dimitrenko, rather, and that's an incomplete pass, making it fourth down. And Joe Herring will put his kicker into the game, number 22, Lee Larson, to try a field goal attempt. The attempt will come from the Chicago 21 yard line, so this will be a 29 yard field goal attempt. 29 yard attempt. Larson has been perfect from this distance in 87. Fulmer is the holder. Now they're going to fake it. Fulmer throws. Incomplete. Mike Stoops, the intended receiver. And Chicago takes over on downs. Now this is the same formation that Ray Yacht used. Now there's the holder, number seven, Fulmar. He can fake it, he comes down, and he can either run the option or throw the ball. He this time throws it deep to his receiver, but Richard Rogers, number 80, makes a good defensive play, and lucky he was ready to go. Now you look here, and you see that the, here's a quarterback right there. He gets the snap, and either either runs or throws it. He throws the ball, watch this man come down there, and you'll see it. Rogers makes a great play right there. Nice play, Rogers, number 80. So Chicago takes over, still no score with 9.25 to go in the opening quarter, and Mike Hold at quarterback, looking to throw, under pressure, throws it deep, intercepted, Pittsburgh picks it off. Russell Hairston making the interception. Russell Harrison is at also 6'3", 205 pounds. Now you watch Hold get around and scramble. He throws it high, but he out jumps him. This Harrison is quite an athlete. Watch number 23 reach up and get it as high as point. Great play by a fine all-around football player, Russell Harrison, 6'3", 206 from Kentucky. And now Harrison comes out as a wide receiver, and he is a threat offensively with seven touchdown receptions. Fulmar goes his way, and it's complete. A penalty flag as Harrison brings it out to the 10-yard line. Hart and Phillips combining on the tackle, but a penalty flag was thrown. The referee, Jack Baker, to walk off the penalty, and it's going to go against the Chicago Bruisers. A three-yard penalty moves the ball out to the 14. We've got a grab in the face mask on the defense. First down. Now you watch number 23, Harrison, as he catches the football, they'll come up to make a tackle. Now grab the face mask. Number 26, Hart grabs a face mask. Now that was not an intentional face mask. If it would have been an intentional face mask, it would have been a 10-yard penalty. That was an inadvertent face mask call. It is a first down for Pittsburgh. John McClellan is the man in motion. Complete at the 22. And a great catch by Mike Stoops on the far side. Mike Stoops out of Iowa. Continuing a tradition at Iowa. His older brother Bobby was a safety man with the Hawkeyes. Then Mike took over. Both were all Big Ten. And now he's got a younger brother, Mark, who's a strong safety man in Iowa. From the 21. Second down for Pittsburgh. From their own 21-yard line. In 
incomplete and just off the fingertips of Russell Harrison. Even though they misconnected Lee, that was a pretty good route by Hairston and a good throw by Fulmer. The impressive thing to me was that Rockmore had made it stayed with Hairston that time. Number 21, you'll watch Rockmore, number 21, who's a new addition to this ball club, stay with Hairston, number 23, in the top of your picture. Hairston will come down, make a fake to the right, and break to the left on a post group. But watch the good jump by Rockmore from Texas A&I. Good defensive play. You felt before the game that Chicago had shored up its secondary. Absolutely. Third down. Completed pass. And stretching out is John McClennan. The officials will mark the football at the 24-yard line. It looks from here to be enough for first down, and now we get the indication that it is. On this replay, you'll watch Rogers, number 80. He's all over the field. He comes up. He's got McClennan one-on-one. -on -one. He makes a good play. Now, remember, last week, Chicago scored, I mean, got scored on five straight times by this Pittsburgh ball club, so they've improved already tremendously. It's a different story here in the first quarter. You see the yards, but those yards have not translated into points. Still nothing, nothing with 6.20 to go in the first period. Fulmer, deep, wide open. Touchdown. Mike Stoops. for the second touchdown reception. Watch Mike Stoops, number 30, get behind Rodgers, number 80, and make a good catch right there and get one foot in. That's all he had to do is get one foot in. The official was right on the play. A little controversial. Looked like he was about one foot in, but he called it. Now, look at this. This is something secret now. He can snap the ball or they'll move over. Now they move over. And Lee Larson to attempt the point after touchdown. Blocked by Daryl Hart, one of the newcomers for Chicago, and that keeps it a 6-0 game. Six minutes and 14 seconds to go in the first quarter. Pittsburgh has drawn first blood. We are gathered here today. You'd expect this Panasonic Omni Movie camcorder to shoot in daylight. If anyone believes this couple should not be married, let him speak now. You might expect this Panasonic camcorder to shoot in room light. Let him speak now. But what you don't expect is that it can shoot by the light of one candle. And it's VHS. Let him speak now. Camcorders that do the unexpected make Panasonic just slightly ahead of our time. This buzz for all that you do. Say, hey, landscaper, tomorrow college student. Yep. Finally took your advice, Mike. You taught him. Already you're smart. you knew. They say he's a lot like you, yeah, you make America work, and this Bud's for you. Here's to you, Beachwood Age, for that clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. To a future architect, and to a brother who made it possible. This Bud's for you. The Pittsburgh Gladiators have taken a 6-0 lead on a 26-yard touchdown pass. And we're going to show you that touchdown play in just a moment. But we're set for the Pittsburgh kickoff. And Lee Larson is set to boot it away for the Gladiators. And the deep man is Mike Hinn. Hinn will take it. Or no, he'll elect it. Let it go out of bounds. That's a touchback as it crossed the goal line and went out of the end zone. So Chicago has it first down and 10. Lee, let's take another look at that touchdown pass play from Brendan Fulmar to Mike Stoops. Okay, it features number 30 right there, Stoops, and number 80, Rogers. Now watch, Stoops will come out here, break that way, make him jump, and takes it up on the sideline. He hit that two in a row, now he hits that one for a touchdown. Let's take a look at it. Now watch Stoops go down, breaks to the outside, and goes up for a touchdown right there. We're back live, and Mike Holt is going for the bundle, and it's a completion, and Chicago has it first and goal to Pittsburgh, too. Richard Rogers made the grab in some traffic. Now the indication. You see the official there saying touchdown. One linesman had marked the ball at the two. Now they give Rogers the score, and the game is tied. A 45-yard touchdown pass play. 
ties the game at six, and Nick Mickemeyer comes in to try to kick. Ray Yarks charges of Chicago have come back to tie the game with lightning-like quickness. 5.45 to go in the quarter, and Mickemeyer's kick is good. There's a top on the field. Chicago has taken the lead. 7-6 over Pittsburgh. summer you need the airline with low fares to all 50 states the biggest bargain airline united i need a vacation and i'm not just flying <laughs> i'm flying a vacation in the friendly skies Six. mike hold the quarterback for chicago with a 45-yard touchdown pass to richard rogers Putting Chicago in front after the Mickemeyer kick, 7-6 and 545 to go in the opening quarter. Hold coming right back to Lee after the interception to throw a touchdown pass. The beautiful part about it, we just isolated on Rodgers getting beat for a touchdown. The next play, he comes back and scores one. So he's leading 7-6 to six now. He gave up six, but he got seven. <laughs> you have to do a plus-minus ratio on these players in arena football. Mickemeyer to kick it off. Off the bar, that's a live ball. And the Gladiators attempt to fall on it. McClennan, number 31, they'll mark the ball out of bounds at the eight. And that's where Chicago will take over, uh, Pittsburgh will take over offensively. First down and 10 from their own 13. Remember last week we talked about those players being coached, they're learning. Anytime the ball goes near that end zone, the coaches now have got the players batting it out of bounds. Good play right there by number 31. McClendon. Brendan Fulmer is in a quarterback at his day to date. Long pass and too long and a penalty flag goes down. The deep man, Russell Hairston, was double covered back there, and a penalty flag went down. Jack Baker to make the announcement of the penalty, and the flag was, one flag was thrown back at the Chicago 10-yard line. But this penalty being marked off from the spot. Holding on the defense, number 25, first down. It'll be first and seven for Pittsburgh. Three yard penalty against Chicago. Might Pittsburgh be looking to work on Richard Rogers? We'll see. McClellan to the 20. Daryl Hart applying the hit. Terry Hinn from Colorado State in on the play. He's a tough, hard-nosed competitor. 5'10", 178 pounds. And last week, we he was a very fine player, both offensively and defensively for the Chicago team. Brendan Fulmer. Had to, had to buy a lot of tickets to accommodate his family and friends. He spent over half his salary on complimentary tickets. Spent about 250 bucks to take care of everybody here at Pittsburgh tonight. And he's taken care of at the line of scrimmage by Chicago. Back to the 18. 82, Jose Lewis and Brent Johnson, number 65, led the defensive charge. It'll make it third down. You know, it's a, you can't even compare it to the Chicago effort so far. They made those five changes. They changed their whole mental attitude, and they've been playing very, very well, particularly on defense against the long pass. 4-10 to go. First quarter. Chicago leading at 7-6. to six. <laughs> Bulmar looking. Incomplete, written into the boards. On the far side is Russell Hairston, and there to take him out of bounds was Derwood Rockmore. 
We have not yet mentioned, Lee, but we should hear about the boards. It is so tight from the sideline and those protected barriers. Oh, wait, it's like a hockey player, but they're getting used to it. Harrison goes against the sideline right there and gets driven into the boards. Very good by Rockmore. But the players are, are learning how to play the board. I think that's impressive to me also. Harrison's a good athlete, but he's got to be careful of those boards. Watch this spe special kind of formation. Look at it now. The Gladiators now line up. And Lee Larson will attempt a 46-yard field goal attempt. Returned by Terry Hinn. Cuts back. And a great return inside the 20, down to the Pittsburgh 17. One of the better returns we've seen. I'll tell you, 95, Greg Best from Kansas State made a great play. Number 95 there. He came from the outside and made a terrific play. He's a tremendous special team player, and they can thank him for keeping it being 14 to 6. There's a timeout on the field. Three minutes and four seconds to go in the first quarter. Chicago leads by a point. If you made hamburger patties the way most places make hamburger patties, you discover your thick, meaty burgers were suddenly dry, flat, and lifeless. So at Hardee's, we developed a way to make our quarter-pound patties gently, to cook up thicker, full of natural juices. It's a complicated machine, but we can give you an idea of the principle we based it on. Hardee's, we're out to win you over. Three minutes and four seconds to play in the opening quarter here at the Civic Arena in Pittsburgh. The Chicago Bruisers beaten by this Pittsburgh team 60-23 to last Friday night, leading 7-6 to in the first period here. This will happen a lot. There's Ray Yock, fine football coach. And remember I mentioned in the last week's show on television that he was home watching the game, and as competitive as he is, he's got his guys ready to play. And he's done it by weaving in five new players. And his opposite number, Joe Herring, the head coach of the Pittsburgh Gladiators, born and raised in Pittsburgh. He's been coaching in the professional ranks since 78 in Canada, in the NFL, and in the USFL. Mike Holt coming up. He's two for four in the air for 51 yards. And looking to throw. Sack. Hold taken down at the 25 yard line. Hello, everybody. Alan Massengale here with the Sports Center update at Wimbledon today. The 73rd meeting between Martina Navratilova and Chris Everett, and it was close until the third set. It went a full three sets, and Martina Navratilova has, as has been in recent years, takes care of Chris Everett, six two. 7-5 and 6-4. Martina going for her sixth Wimbledon title in a row, eighth overall. But the problem may be young Steffi Graf. That was her 45th win in a row over Pam Shriver, 6-love and 6-2. And Steffi Graf has not lost in 87. So the finals are Saturday. The young upstart, Steffi Graf versus the reigning queen of tennis, Martina Navratilova. Now, the men's final four will be tomorrow on Friday. Jimmy Connors hanging in there for the Americans. But first of all, we'll talk about Yvonne Lindell versus Stefan Edberg. And, uh, and Lindell hopes to add to his French Open title. Jimmy Connors of America taking on Pat Cash of Australia. Only two games in the National League to talk about tonight. We'll talk about the Cincinnati Reds, first of all, taking on the New York Mets. Of course, the Mets five games out of first behind St. Louis and the Reds trying to take care of a two game lead over Houston in the National West. They are now in the sixth inning. The Reds are being shut out. Cal Daniels left the game after running into the left field wall. We'll update his condition tonight on SportsCenter following midget racing here on ESPN. Lenny Dykstra had a home run for New York his seventh of the year. Now most of the season we've heard about the Davey Johnson, the manager of the Mets, Davey Johnson, and the squabble he has had with his young star, Daryl Strawberry. Well, apparently Strawberry now has more problems in the clubhouse. Teammate Lee Mazzilli has openly criticized Strawberry for missing two games against St. Louis. Strawberry says he had the flu, but Mazzilli says he should have played through the ailment. I have to care about Daryl. Uh, you know, he's a friend, and I, and I, I, I do have feelings for him because I do like him. Uh, but this is a team, and we're going to win together, we're going to lose together as a team. And I feel that he let the manager down, he let the coaches down, and most of all, he's letting his teammates down. And you can't do that in this game. Uh, Darrell is 
better at 70% than most guys are at 100% playing this game. Starberry is in the lineup tonight. In the American League, well, we finally found something that will cool down the, uh, well, one more score from the National League. Houston over Philadelphia, 3-2. That is in the third inning. Davey Lopes had a home run in this one, but it is a rain delay right now. 3-2 Houston trying to catch up with Cincinnati in the West. As for the American League, finally found something that will cool down the New York Yankees, who now have a three-game lead in their division over Toronto. There was a rain out in New York tonight. Texas was supposed to come visiting, but they will try a doubleheader tomorrow afternoon, a twinight doubleheader. Chicago at Cleveland, battle of the bottom dwellers. And in case you're interested in this one, it's in the fifth inning, one-to-one -one Chicago and Cleveland. Minnesota and Kansas City. KC can tie the Twins with a win tonight because KC is one game out. It is nothing, nothing into the second inning. Brett Saberhagen is looking for win number 14 on the year. He has only lost two, 13 and 13-2 coming against uh, Joe Necro, who was 5-4 and four coming into this one. Other games... The late game uh, at California, Milwaukee, they are now into the uh, fifth inning. Nothing, nothing there. Juan Nieves going against Mike Witt. Mike Witt looking for win number 10 on the year. Boston is visiting Oakland this evening. Al Nipper going for win number 8 against Joaquin Andujar. And no score there into the fifth inning. Detroit at Seattle. And the score there this evening, well, I don't have it yet. No report from Seattle. More arena football coming away in just a moment here on ESPN, so stay with us. The excitement of baseball. It doesn't end when the game ends, and neither does your need to know. That's why so many baseball fans read the Sporting News, America's sports authority for over 100 years. It's great reading, and now you can get in on a great half-price offer. Call now and get 40 issues of the Sporting News for four easy payments of $5.45. You'll also get special preview issues at no extra cost. So call now, toll free, 1-800-526-5000. That's 1-800-526-5000. This is where Michael Jordan kept practicing his jump shot when he didn't make varsity. This is where George Brett kept fielding after his team lost the state finals. And this is where Walter Payton played every game his freshman year as a drummer in the marching band. What do these legends have in common? They've always had a will to win. And they've always had a Wilson. Working hard can really take it out of you. So I look for something to put it back. USA Wet is a sports drink that tastes great. No aftertaste, and it gets me moving because it has half the sodium and more potassium than Gatorade. USA Wet, the hard-working sports drink with half the sodium. Now in three delicious flavors. It's hard-working refreshment. Some fast food places will do anything to sell you a meal. Try our new family size fries. Anything. There's a luau in every bite. Presenting the world's smallest hamburger. Well, if you'd sooner do without all those gimmicks, you're invited to Hardee's for thick, juicy, 100% pure American beef burgers, which, quite frankly, speak for themselves. Because at Hardee's, we're out to win you over. It's halftime in Pittsburgh with the Gladiators leading Chicago 27 to 7. And our halftime guest is a familiar friend indeed, Vino Cook, ESPN's college football analyst. And Vino, before we talk about the colleges, your impressions of arena football. Well, I think they have to get a little more running into the game. And I also think they have to do something about the defense in the last minute because the players are exhausted. But I think it has a chance. I think I never thought the USFL had a chance. But this league has a chance to make it. You know, the Gladiators in first place, they're 2-0. and How has the city adopted this Well, team? the magic number is three, and they make the playoffs. But uh, <laughs> uh, it, I'm amazed uh, the city has gone after the game that well. Uh, this is not a good sports time, in my opinion. But the fans are excited. They come. It's entertainment. Don't compare it with the NFL. Take it for what it is. And it's, it's, it's entertainment. That's what it is. It's fun. Indeed. Well, you know, speaking of fun, last year at this time, I think you picked Penn State 
to win a national title. No, I picked him to play with a national title but lose to Nebraska. Well, why did you say you picked him? That would have been a no scoop, huh? Well, it's, I don't want to, you know, <laughs> I did pick Nebraska Beano. last year. Okay, this year, who do you think, Beano? Well, I think it's a little early to pick the team, but I'm rooting for Nebraska because I like the coach, Coach Tom Osborne. I think Clemson and Penn State because of the schedules, and uh, they're not tough schedules. They got some tough games, but not tough schedules. And I also think Arkansas has a chance. I think Penn State has an outstanding coach in Joe Paterno. Despite losing all the player, uh, players, Matt Kisner, the quarterback, could be the John Hewitt of the 80s. That's how good I think he is. So it's one of those four teams, but I don't know which one yet. Okay, everybody, is. there's a controversy, as you know, about playing the championship on the field and having a true champion and a playoff instead of the polls. What's your opinion of that? Well, last the last two years, they did play it on the field. In the Orange Bowl, Oklahoma won. Penn State won it on the field last year. I'm against a playoff right now. There are too many problems in college football. Solve those problems. And if we solve those problems, once we get into the 90s, maybe have a playoff with two teams. And if it goes well, go to four teams. But right now, I'm against it. Thank you, Beto. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Beto Cook, our guest here at halftime. We'll be back with more from Pittsburgh in just a moment. The Gladiators lead 27 to 7. fares to all 50 states. The biggest bargain airline, United. I need a vacation and I'm not just flying. I'm flying a vacation in the friendly skies. In this reconstituted, freeze-dried, pre-mixed world of ours, it's hard to find a breakfast that's totally made from scratch. Man? Well, at Hardee's, our biscuits are made just that way, with no shortcuts like some other guys use. But then that's probably why they taste so good, and why at Hardee's, we can truly say, we're out to win you over. <sighs> Working hard can really take it out. So I look for something to put it back. USA Wet is a sports drink that tastes great. No aftertaste, and it gets me moving because it has half the sodium and more potassium than Gatorade. USA Wet, the hard-working sports drink with half the sodium. Now in three delicious flavors. It's hard-working refreshment. This is where champions begin. Ladies and gentlemen, Mike Tyson, Terrence Ali, Ray Boom Boom Mancini, superstars who forge steel nerves and iron punches on ESPN's top-ranked boxing. Watch live Tuesday night fights. Top-ranked boxing puts you in the ring where champions are made on ESPN. Pittsburgh leading 27 to 7 here at halftime over the Chicago Bruisers and the main man in Pittsburgh is Russell Hairston, the former Kentucky Wildcat. This is touchdown reception. Keep your eye on Hairston number 23. As he comes down, he'll slip, but then he'll break to the outside and he's got Rockmore one-on-one -on -one coverage, which is the essence of arena football. Now watch him. Keep your eye on his eyes as he reaches up at the last moment and concentrates on catching the ball for a touchdown. Russell Harrison leads the league in touchdown passes, and you can see why. That's the eighth one that he's caught this season. Nine catches in the first half for 132 yards. That gives him 30 catches and over 500 yards in three games. All right, he's featured in this play. Watch Harrison right here. He comes down and across the middle. He's supposed to go right there, but he picks the man. This man goes in motion, and Federico goes there. That's an illegal play, even in arena football. Now, 23, Harrison will go down across the middle, and he will pick off the middle linebacker right here, number 34, Finch, and allow Federico to catch the ball and go into the end zone. But that's an illegal play. As I said before, it's been run 14 times, and that was the first time they ever called that play. 
It's time now for the Hardy's Coach's Corner. And let's check in with Pittsburgh head coach Joe Herring. And Joe, a solid first half of football for your team coming back from that 7-6 to six deficit. Right, and uh, Lee was right. It was the first time it was called on that pick play, and it was against me. So you think everybody's picking on me? <laughs> yeah, but you're unbeaten. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Well, whatever. We, yeah, well, I think that our quarterback did a pretty good job. He's a young guy, and... Uh, He's trying to go out there and uh, try to get some experience on the move, and he's doing a pretty good job. He needs to come back the second half with a little bit more confidence, and I think we'll be all right. Joe, Russell Harrison seems like in a class by himself. What do you think? He's the, he's right now, of course, the uh, he's proven he's the best receiver in the league, and it's just tough for anybody in this league to cover him one-on-one, -on -one, and that's what they have to do in man-to-man uh, -man coverage. Okay, good luck to you, Joe. Thank you. Joe Herring, the head coach of the Pittsburgh Gladiators. The halftime statistics as Pittsburgh leads it 27 to 7 and you see that first half passing statistic 201 yards for Brendan Fulmar of Pittsburgh the return yards Chicago with 102 but they've been unable to do anything with the great field position they've had the reason why the turnovers they've had three turnovers and also the third down play has been killing them as I said before in the ball game they've only had 13 percent completions on third down and you can't keep the football with that kind of average 27 to 7 the Pittsburgh Gladiators lead Chicago and the Bruisers will be kicking off to Pittsburgh here Nick Mickemeyer is into the ball game to kick off for Chicago the deep men for the Gladiators on the near side, that is John McLennan, number 31, and Ricky Mitchell, number eight, also in the end zone on the left side of your screen. So we're all set with the second half from the Civic Arena. And here's Mickemeyer. Mitchell will return. Ten. Spins away and moves the football out to the 17. Brent Johnson made the tackle for the Chicago Bruisers. Here's Brendan Fulmar coming in. Came off the bench last week in Chicago, and because of the injury to Mike Hohens, he's starting. And you see his numbers. He's got a whale of a game going. First down at 10, Pittsburgh. Gladiator 17. Stoops in motion. Through the hands of Mike Stoops, but that was a hot pass for Stoops to try to hang on. And at number 50, Mark Rodenhauser, 6'4", 265, put the pressure on him. They've got to put more pressure on Fulmar or they'll never stop that team. Mike Hohensee is on the bench for the Pittsburgh Gladiators. He had completed 33 of 55 passes for almost 500 yards in two games, but out with that knee injury. Completed pass to Stoops, and that moves the football to the 25-yard line. That will set up a third down and three. Stoops with six receptions. Bob, right here is a very important play. If Chicago can just stop Pittsburgh now and get some psychological advantage back, they can come back and win this game. But this is an important play right here. Third and two. And the pass play is complete to who else but Russell Hairston. Inside the 10 at the 8. Watch the isolation play, isolation play. Number 26, Daryl Hart tries to cover him, but there's no way. But watch the way he turns his shoulders over his head and concentrates on the ball. The most impressive thing about him is the way he has the eye-hand contact. He keeps his eye on that ball all the way to his hands. And that's the secret to a great offensive receiver. First and goal, Pittsburgh at the Chicago 9-yard line. Pitch, Federico. To the four. 
This young man from Illinois State runs the ball very well indeed. At the end of our arena football game, we'll be going live to Indianapolis. Bob Jenkins, Gary Lee, and Larry Newber standing by for the USAC sprint race from the speed room in Indianapolis. 27-7 Pittsburgh, and the Gladiators are knocking on the door again. Touchdown! Russell Harrison, his second grab today, his ninth in three games. touchdown passes for quarterback Brendan Fulmar and Pittsburgh leads it 33 to 7 and Lee Larson in to kick the kick is no good wide to the right 11.57 left to play in the third quarter. And the unbeaten and league-leading Pittsburgh Gladiators rolling over Chicago, 33-7. If you made hamburger patties the way most places make hamburger patties, you'd discover your thick, meaty burgers were suddenly dry, flat, and lifeless. So at Hardee's, we developed a way to make our quarter pound patties gently, to cook up thicker, full of natural juices. It's a complicated machine, but we can give you an idea of the principle we based it on. Hardee's, we're out to win you over. The top scoring offensive machine in arena football, the Pittsburgh Gladiators. And they have scored once again. Mike Hinn, ready to accept the kickoff from Lee Larson. The Gladiators leading it 33 to 7 with 11.57 to play in the third quarter. Lee Larson is hit on three field goals in this game, but just missed that point after touchdown. Mike Hole. Now coming out of the end zone with his Steve Finn. And crunched into the boards. By Pittsburgh. They return out to the 14-yard line, and Chicago will have it there first and 10. This is a nice low-angle replay of number 23 Harrison against number 26 Hart. As he breaks to the outside in a lob pass, the quarterback Fulmer will throw it very high, and 6-3 Harrison just out jumps number 26 Hart. It's a physical mismatch. You see it in basketball all the time, and it happens in football too. Chicago, first and ten, and a handoff to Eddie Phillips. And the former Iowa Hawkeye moves it out over the 15 to the 17. Former South Carolina Gamecock Mike Hold at the controls of Chicago. And in the first half of play, Mike Hold hit on 5 of 13 for 58 yards. And a scrambling quarterback that can make some things happen as he runs around back there, but he's been unable to escape the Pittsburgh pressure. He's been sacked five times and throws that one into the ground. Deflected that time by Ernest Adams, number 85. Well, he's a good-looking athlete. 6'3", 235, played at Illinois. All Big Ten, like I said, an excellent pass rusher, but he's got arms like about a 6'8 guy, and he deflected that pass right there. He's from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, is Ernest Adams. Played at Dillard High School. And all Big Ten, as you mentioned, Lee, at Illinois. Here's Hold again to throw. Beauty. Touchdown, Chicago. Making the grab, Steve Finch. And the Bruisers come alive with that score. Right on the money for Mike Hold. And Steve Finch getting the high five. to go in the third quarter. Now Nick 
Mickemeyer. They kick the PAT. Kick is good. So the Bruisers tack on a point, courtesy of Mr. Mickemeyer. And the Pittsburgh lead is 19. <sighs> Working hard can really take it out. So I look for something to put it back. USA Wet is a sports drink that tastes great. No aftertaste, and it gets me moving because it has half the sodium and more potassium than Gatorade. USA Wet, the hard-working sports drink with half the sodium. Now in three delicious flavors. It's hard-working refreshment. Back at Pittsburgh, Gladiators 33, Chicago 14, and the injured Gladiator is number 54, Craig Walls from Indiana. And uh, they're working on Walls there. All right, keep your eye on the top of the picture, number 34 is Finch against number 29, Richmond. He goes deep and he breaks a post route and he's got a beat and Hull lays it on in mind. That's all they needed to get back in this ball game. Fitch beat Richmond, a defensive back. Psychologically, they're ready to come back now. So the injured player, Craig Walls, trying to come off. And you think a leg cramp, Lee? Muscle cramp? It looks like that, but he had problems. As you can see, he's wearing those... Uh, knee braces he's had problems with his knees when he was in college but i think it's the problem they have in this league is that these players have never played two ways since high school and they've got to drink a lot of liquid absolutely he didn't want any liquid he's got to drink that liquid more water walls more water coach lee corso <laughs> sorry explaining things <laughs> 10 26 to go in the third quarter 33 14 pittsburgh leading and now Mickemeyer to kick it deep. Number eight is Ricky Mitchell. And number 31, John McClennan. Tonight's attendance we've been handed here in Pittsburgh, 11,807. So another crowd of over 11,000 here in Pittsburgh. Mickemeyer. the end zone for touchback. Coming up next, the USAC Midget Racing from the Indiana Speed Room. Bob Jenkins, Larry Newber, and Gary Lee standing by live from Indianapolis, immediately following Arena Football. 10-24, and the clock moving now in the third quarter. Pittsburgh quarterback Brendan Fulmar with four touchdown passes, and his favorite target, Russell Hairston. Goes wide to the right. Hairston to the 15. I would believe, Lee, the secondary men for Chicago, that time Rockmore was defending, they're going to see this man in their sleep all night. So, because of the fact that they must play man for man, there's nothing else you can do. There's nobody in this league that can cover the man man for man. The only way to stop Harrison is to knock Fulmer, number seven, down before he can throw it. <laughs> Indeed. Fulmer comes back the other way to McClendon. To the 18. Lee, there is the bump rule at the line of scrimmage. Would you move up and put a little pressure on Harrison that try to hold him up at the line for a beat or two? Yeah, absolutely, but you know what'll happen? He'll run that fade. He'll run right past you, and he's six foot four, and he can outrun, jump any of those corners. That's why they can't stop this guy unless they put the pressure on the quarterback. So he's got you either way. Absolutely. And he's making that guy, Joe Herring, a nice and good coach. Second and eight. Pittsburgh has it. It's on 17. McClendon in motion. Complete. Only stick at the 20 yard line. Stoops made the reception and Rockmore with the major league hit. Bolmar connecting with Stoops. Brendan now is it. Stoops seven times for 67 yards and he's completed 25 of 36 in the game. The only way that they can get back in the ball game, Chicago, is to play good defense. They can't outscore him. They've got to play defense. 
Packers right now. Third down for the Gladiators and Bono. Stoops, a former Iowa Hawkeye. He was the first Ironman award winner in arena football in the first game played against Washington. Bomar is at seven in a row. The interception made beyond the end line by Durwood Rockmore. Incomplete pass. Rockmore had good pass coverage on that time because he played a man for man and just kind of ran with him, and the pass was a little short. One of the things that is happening right now, the Pittsburgh Ball Club is using a no back offense, which is very, very new. Nobody's used that in arena football, but Perry Moss used it with the Orlando Renegades when he coached for me. If Pittsburgh shows that set, We'll point it out to you. 98, David Trinko in the game at fullback. Rafferty in motion. Here's the incomplete. Juggling going out of bounds. They finally found a way to stop Harrison. They run him out of bounds and into the wall. And the wall stops him. <laughs> Nobody else has been able to stop him the entire game. <laughs> 6.20 left to go in the third quarter. The third down story. And it is third and ten for the Gladiators. Pass over throw and Harrison and Rockmore going at it. And a penalty flag fly. That's bound to happen when you're getting whipped all night long. A little frustration come out, and, and he'll probably, he'll either call it on either man, or he might call it on Hairston, because Rockmore, actually, number 21, made a good play, drove him into the United Airlines stands right there, <laughs> dropped him off the Holiday Inn Parkway West, and he came back and took a swung at, swing at Rockmore. Referee Jack Baker and his linesman. Bill Schmitz, the side judge, and now Ray Yock moves out onto the turf to see what the call is going to be. On the far sideline, Joe Herring, the Pittsburgh coach, has come over the boards and onto the field because he wants an interpretation. 58 to play in the third quarter with Pittsburgh leading 33-14. There's Joe Herring, the Pittsburgh coach. Hey, you see, here's Personal the call. Personal foul, number 23 on the offense. Penalty is refused. Fourth down. Well, we'll take a look on that pass play to Russell Hairston. Now watch the top of your picture. Rockmore makes a nice play, runs him into the United Airlines right there, a legal play, and number 23, Harrison, turns around and gives him a shot right there. Now watch, left hook, a stranglehold, wrestling. United States wrestling. Lee Larson in on fourth down, a 35-yard field goal attempt. against Pittsburgh. Correction on the penalty. Continuing action. It'll be fourth down. Fourth down. The football has been moved back to the Gladiator 23. The fourth time the Gladiators have been penalized. Now Larson tries it from the 15. This will be a 43-yard attempt. Four field goals in a game, but give Larson a new record. 
returned by Chicago. And Fitch is hit hard and knocked out of bounds. So the Bruisers with 525 to go in the third quarter. They've got the football trailing 33-14. Pittsburgh 33 and Chicago 14. Bruisers come up to the line of scrimmage and they bring Rogers in motion. Hand on Bill Stone and Stone fights and gets his way up to the 17. Federico making the tackle as Bill Stone out of Adams State runs the ball. That's a first down for Chicago. Out to the 17. The Bruisers held a 7-6 lead in the first quarter. Playing come from behind here in the second half. Paul throw. Incomplete. A diving attempt made by Steve Finch. Finch has had him beat that time, but Holtz just threw a little bit to the outside. What they need to do right now, Holtz particularly, doesn't have to hurry. Take your time. Now, right there, he's looking at a cheat sheet. They signal in like number five. He looks at number five, and it says throw it for a touchdown, son. Is that what that is? I always wondered what it said on those cheat sheets. Absolutely. <laughs> Shades of Tom Matty. Second and ten. Cole hit as he throws, and the ball sails into the seats. Oh, incomplete. And for number 40, Terry Hinn. Hinn, the intended receiver. Third down. And there. Greg Walls, number 54, put the pressure on him that time. It was a really good off defensive play. He got his hands up on number 10, Cole, and he couldn't deliver the ball like he wanted to. and hold is down at the 13 they had him in the grass so the oh, bruisers in the grass. Oh, on fourth down bring nick mickemeyer into the game tackle and the pressure made by willis yates the sixth pittsburgh side so fourth down a field goal attempt for nick mickemeyer and he'll spot the ball down at the six, so that makes it a 52-yard attempt. Deflected. Pittsburgh looking to return. Ricky Mitchell plowed into the board by Bill Stone, and a penalty fly goes down. Some frustrations, Lee, is fellas getting a little physical here, ramming people into the sideline. I think what happened that time, Pittsburgh blocked below the waist. And on the kicking game, you cannot block below the waist because that's a very dangerous play. Clipping 68 on the run back. Down out of the field. 243 to play in the third quarter. Pittsburgh leads it by 19. On the run back. This is a hamburger getting hard and dry because it's cooking on a flame that's too high. At Hardee's, we make our quarter pound hamburgers at a lower temperature, so they cook up thicker, succulent, full of natural juices, and the flavor doesn't go up in smoke. Hardee's, we're out to win you over. Seconds left in the third quarter. Pittsburgh leading Chicago 33 to 14. The Gladiators have it first down at 10 from their own seven yard line. Brendan Fulmar, the Pittsburgh quarterback, 26 for 40 in this game. 
256 yards. A big number seven has thrown four touchdown passes. Complete to John McClendon. And on his back gets the football out to the eight-yard line. McClendon played collegiately at the University of Tennessee. He was a walk-on for the Volunteers. Kickoff return man from Cookville, Tennessee. There's the pride of Pittsburgh, Joe Herring. His gladiators unbeaten at 2-0, leading this one 33-14. He's got another one. Stripped out of his hands by Rockmore. They're going to give Harrison the completion. First and 10 gladiators at the Chicago 12. It can get very frustrating when you've got to play man for man in this league over and over against a great receiver like Harrison. He just breaks the ball inside and Fulmer throws the ball. It's very frustrating, but basically watch it at the top of your screen. He'll come down, make a fake, and then he breaks to the inside. He gets good position. The ball is thrown perfectly, and Harrison's got great concentration on the ball. Rockmore could not have played that one much better than that. He fumbles it, but when it's going hot, you're hot. Jose Lewis is on the turf and injured now getting up. Oh, you mentioned Harrison Lee. He is having quite a game. 13 catches, 192 yards, and two touchdowns. Budweiser keeps the action going. For all you do, this Bud's for you. We've got a minute 24 left to play in the third quarter here in Pittsburgh, and the Gladiators lead it 33 to 14. Washington will play at Denver tomorrow night. The first home game for the Dynamite at McNichols Arena. Tim Markham have his ball club all raring to go. He lost in Washington last weekend. And Bob Harrison's commandos on the road. And that will be in Denver next Saturday for the Pittsburgh-Denver game. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. John McClellan. McClellan picks off the fifth touchdown pass of the game for Brendan Bomar. Pittsburgh leads 39-14. Larson in to kick it. Pittsburgh now shifts the huddle over to the line of scrimmage for the Larson kick. Chicago 14, showing you why they lead this league in scoring. Take a look at number 31, McKenna, right there in the bottom of your picture. As he comes down, he's got Hart man for man. He makes a fake. He goes this way. Hart hesitates. McKenna beats him for a touchdown. Watch the hesitation. Keep your eye on number 31, McKenna. He comes down. He breaks. Now watch. 26, Hart hesitate, and that's all it needed right there. Touchdown, McKenna. The short field works a couple of ways as McLennan makes his first touchdown reception of the game. Defensively, if you're on top of the play, you're able to snuff, snuff it off quickly. Yet, if you're faked out, one step burns you. The most devastating rule in this league is man-to-man -man coverage on pass defense. That's the one thing that changes it, and, and it's completely different than any other football played in the world. Not in America, in the world, is that man-for-man -man pass defense. Kicks to Terry Hand. And Ricky Mitchell knocks him into the boards as Hen takes the shot. As Mitchell applied the hit and helped him up. Good sportsmanship. Must have had a good college coach. Yeah, he must have. That's right. He had <laughs> he had Bill Mallory, and I only had him for a year. Bill Mallory's a good coach. Under a minute to play, the Gladiators. Taking it easy, leading 40 to 14. First and 10. And Mike Hole brings him up. <laughs> In 
incomplete. Pass was deflected, so no interference. At the top of the show, we talked about Pittsburgh's physical power. They're the best-looking football team in their uniforms. They're the best-conditioned team we've seen so far. They're the most physical team. They well-balanced football team. They're going to be a tough team to beat in arena football. Second down at 10. If they get the snap off here, they've got two seconds. This will be the last play of the quarter. Mike Hall throwing way over the head of the intended receiver, Mike McDade. That's the end of the third quarter. The Pittsburgh Gladiators looking to run their record to 3-0, leading Chicago 40-14. Working hard can really take it out of you. So I look for something to put it back. USA Wet is a sports drink that tastes great. No aftertaste, and it gets me moving because it has half the sodium and more potassium than Gatorade. USA Wet, the hard-working sports drink with half the sodium. Now in three delicious flavors. It's hard-working refreshment. Down through the years, the big games, the special games, always seem to live on in your memory. The excitement of baseball. It doesn't end when the game ends, and neither does your need to know. That's why so many baseball fans read the Sporting News, America's sports authority for over 100 years. The Sporting News gives you complete, in-depth coverage by more than 40 staff writers reporting right from the scene of the action. The teams. The stars, the strategies, the stats and standings, the pulse-pounding play-by-play excitement. Everything you want, you'll find right here in the Sporting News. It's great reading, and now you can get in on a great half-price offer. Grab a pencil quick, and here's a friend with all the details. Call now and get 40 issues of the Sporting News for four easy payments of $5.45. You'll also get special preview issues at no extra cost. So call now, toll-free, 1-800-526-5000. That's 1-800-526-5000. We are gathered here today... You'd expect this Panasonic Omnimovie camcorder to shoot in daylight. If anyone believes this couple should not be married, let him speak now. You might expect this Panasonic camcorder to shoot in room light. Let him speak now. But what you don't expect is that it can shoot by the light of one candle. And it's VHS. Let him speak now. Camcorders that do the unexpected make Panasonic just slightly ahead of our time. Well, right after our arena football game tonight, we'll be live at the Indianapolis Speed Room for USAC Midget Racing. Last week, George Wilkins won a 50-lapper. It's a 100-lapper tonight for the feature. Well, you know, they've been watching a contact sport in arena football. This, too, is a contact sport. We've seen one triple flip so far this evening. The driver, Rick Bodine, is okay. Car not badly damaged. A lot of wheel banging and a lot of competition. So join us right after our arena football for live USAC Midget Racing here at Indianapolis. Now back to the Civic Center in Pittsburgh, Bob and Lee. Thanks, Bob and Gary. We indeed look forward to the racing from Indy coming up right after Arena Football. Fifteen minutes to go, fourth quarter underway. Pittsburgh leading, and Mike Hole throwing. Incomplete, and Hold was really sandwiched as he released that pass. Things have not gone well for Mike in the second half. He is one for seven. With that only completion, the 33-yard touchdown pass to Finch. The problem Hole has is that he cannot throw the ball with Adams, number 85, and 68, Willis Yates, all over him. Right there, Adams had a big piece of him, 6'3", 235. Boom. He went over a 5'11", 190-pound hole and just threw him down. Now on fourth down, Nickemeyer will kick. Field goal attempt is short, will be returned. Rafferty stopped by Stone and company at the 11 yard line. So Pittsburgh will have it there, first down to 10. As we watch this arena game unfold over the three weeks league, really the weed being separated from the chaff here, it looks like Pittsburgh and Washington have got the two top ball clubs. Because they're both number one and number two on defense. You win in any league in football with a basic sound defense because that keeps you close to the ball game. Chicago's problems are 
number one, they don't have enough defensive power to stop anybody, and that's why they're getting beat. Pittsburgh leading it 40 to 14. Gladiators up to the line of scrimmage. Penalty flags and a delay, a game penalty coming up against the Gladiators. It looked like there was some confusion as Pittsburgh broke the huddle and came up to the line. Chicago got in a new defense that time. They put four linemen down and we're going to put them. On the offense, number seven. First down. That is one of the new rules. You can put four men up and go after them. They've got to put four up. In fact, they'd be better off trying to put five up there and take a chance. That's the only way they're going to win this game. Brendan Palmer studying that defense. Now throws, and he's got his man on the near side, number 28, Jim Rafferty. Out of Colgate. Rafferty giving Harrison a breather. You know what Palmer did that time, which is smart? He came up and watched the 32nd clock. And he did not snap the ball until it was about 28 seconds gone. So therefore, he uses a lot of clock while he's running his drive. Well coached play. Brendan Fulmar, who was an understudy to Mike Hohensey, now center stage, and he's had a terrific game, completing over 70% of his passes in two games. Intercepted, picked off by Chicago and Rockford. Returns it to Pittsburgh territory at the 23. The 26, Daryl Hard with the interception. 26 Hard makes a good play on this one because he goes back and he's kind of lurking around. His man was nowhere. Keep your eye number 26 at the top of your picture. His man plays a zone and he jumps to the ball right there. 26 made a good play. They needed that play. Now they get a touchdown back in the ball game. Nice play by Daryl Hart. Mike Hole back to pass. Waits. To the end zone. Off the net. Intercepted. Touchback. Pittsburgh. One of the wacky plays in arena football. And it turned Mike Hole to Chicago. with the interception. You just can't believe the amount of pressure they put on the quarterback. Here's Adams, number 85. There's number 67, Weaver. He's got such strong breath, he just threw him down by yelling at him. And then the ball comes off the net. The ball comes out the net, and that Stoops is all... I think there must be four number 30s out there. Stoops catching them, knocking them down, running them, intercepting them. Excellent football player, Mike Stoops from Iowa. <laughs> Forty to fourteen, Pittsburgh. They've got it first down and ten from their own five. Hand off to Mitchell. Quick trap play, and it got Mitchell a couple of yards out to the eight. What they do in this game, and listen, this looks like the number one running plays are going to be kind of misdirection plays to get people to flow one way and come back. If nothing else, it makes them stay in their zones and they don't rush the passer as fast. Love and tend to play in the game. 40 to 14. Pittsburgh leading. USAC. Midget Racing from Indianapolis next on ESPN. Incomplete. Jim Rafferty. Trying to make the grab. Incomplete. Chicago's only sending three men on the pass rush, and they cannot get to him. 64 right there is Bill Hogan. He didn't get anywhere near him. He's too heavy. He's 6'2", 295, but he told me before the game, hey, I'm only 290. He'll be about 240. <laughs> he, must have, game. he must have had a salad for long. Oh. <laughs> He's a monster. Lomar from his goal line. Complete. Bounds at the 19-yard line. Number 95 making the grab. Greg Best. One of the new additions, Mike Powell for Pittsburgh was injured last week in Chicago. Best was signed this week. He played at Kansas State. 
One of the things that's a very good coaching point here for Joe Herring. He's got number 23 out of the ball game, Harrison. Why? 40 to 14. You break a leg, you lose a championship. Let him sit over there. He's done for the night. Pittsburgh dominating in first down statistics. Dominating out of the scoreboard. Bomar to the end zone. That's going to be an interception. Chicago returning. Darrell Hart gets it into Pittsburgh territory at the 23. Number 26, Darrell. That ball never hit the ground. First, there was the Pittsburgh receiver. And downfield was Jim Rafferty for the Gladiators. And Chicago was able to pick it off. Time out on the field. 9.23 to go in the game. Pittsburgh leading Chicago 40-14. to We'll be right back. Experience the most luscious sunrise in the world. Hardy's Canadian Sunrise Biscuit. Real Canadian bacon, cheese, farm fresh egg, and hickory smoked bacon on Hardy's made from scratch Rise and Shine Biscuit. For a taste so special, it'll brighten your whole day. Hardy's, we're out to win you over. Chicago's Daryl Hart with his second interception of the game. And here's number two on that last play. Keep your eye on Rafferty, number 28. He does not watch the ball into his hand. The deflection kicks off his foot. Boom. 26. Hart's got it. As long as the ball does not touch the ground, it could be kicked by 26 guys. <laughs> and that time Hart gets it and comes back. And Chicago get a touchdown and they're back in this game. 9.05 to go. Hole throws it complete to McDade. And Mike gets it down to the Pittsburgh 16. Number 20, Mike McVay. There's a number 30, Mike. Two. Mike Hold, when he was in South Carolina on their Gator Bowl team a few years back, he was brought in to rally the Gamecocks. He brought them from behind in three different games to victory during Joe Morrison's fine campaign and Chicago hoping some of that luck comes back to into play tonight against Pittsburgh. Incomplete on the near side and the intended receiver was Steve Finch. Richmond is defending. You know, Bob, the one thing that the Chicago doesn't have that you can see immediately from up here is they don't have a deep threat. They don't have anybody that can streak down a field and get a touchdown real quick. They got nice short receivers, but the backs are starting to jump up in front of them. There's Ray Yock. He's into the game. He's got a chance, but they got to develop a long passing game somewhere along the line. Oh, throws to Richard Rogers. Out of bounds. Near the 10-yard line. Richard Rogers. Despite the fact it's 40 to 14, they're still pounding those pads. Pittsburgh 40, Chicago 14. Hold is it on four of his last 17. He's got his man there, and that's Eddie Phillips. And Eddie wiggles down to the four-yard line. Eddie Phillips.